Here we'll take a look at the mathematical model, which is the first element of pre-analysis. The physical problem is 3D. The mathematical model we will use is axis symmetric. So there's an axis symmetric assumption built into the mathematical model. Let's take a look at that assumption, the axis symmetric assumption. If I take a cross section through the pipe, it'll look like that. That's the axis and that's the axial direction. So the axial coordinate I'll denote as Z and that's a radial direction and I will denote that as R. That's the top wall and that's the bottom wall. And if I look from here, I will see um, the circular cross section and I can put, you know, let's say that would be my X and Y coordinates. But here in the axisymmetric assumption, I won't be working in terms of X and Y coordinates. I'll be working in terms of the radial and axial coordinates. And in this view, let's take a look at what that radial coordinate would look like. If I take a point here, okay, the radial coordinate would be the distance from the axis. So that would be the radial coordinate r, pardon my chicken scratch. And this angle here would be theta. So, and that would be a circumferential coordinate and you are, you know, if you change theta, you're moving in the in the circumferential direction. So in the axisymmetric assumption, we switch to the cylindrical coordinates, radial, circumferential, and axial. And we knock off any dependence on the, the circumferential coordinate, which means that you know, I can change theta to whatever value it is, to whatever value keeping everything else the same, and say the velocity or pressure won't change which means that if I draw a circle, and pardon my chicken scratch here, okay, if I draw a circle, the pressure and velocity are going to have the same values along that circle. That's the asymmetric assumption. For instance, pressure is just going to be a function of the radial coordinate and the axial coordinate. And the velocity, instead of decomposing it into the usual you know, x and y components, we are going to decompose it into a radial component and an axial component. And then there's also a circumferential component that's going to be like that, and that's going to be like a swirl. We'll, we'll say that that's also zero. Okay, so this radial velocity, if I go to some point here, that radial velocity will be in that direction. So that'll be actually V sub R. And the axial coordinate, axial velocity is going to be in that direction. And each of those um, velocities, V sub R, that's a radial velocity is going to be a function of just the radial direction, the axial direction, and similarly for the axial velocity. That is the axisymmetric assumption, and with that assumption, we have reduced the problem to just involving two coordinates. So it's a 2D problem, but not in the conventional way that we, we do a 2D problem.